Hello and welcome everyone, Our Heart here, and today I've got a campaign gameplay preview of Total War Saga Troy to show you all. I'm playing as Menelaus, King of Sparta, but on the 24th of July I'll also have another campaign gameplay preview video out where I'll be playing as Paris of Troy. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already so you don't miss any of these campaign previews. Big thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access. I'm allowed to show you guys 90 minutes of gameplay today within the first 40 turns of the game. I'll spend the first part of this video going through some of the various new features and mechanics that Troy has on the campaign map, then I'll just start playing through as many turns as I can in my usual Let's Play format. I'll also try and share my thoughts and impressions on the game so far as I play through. Feel free to let me know down in the comments section what you like, what you dislike, and if you have any questions. So far from what I've played of the campaign side of things for Troy, it does seem pretty good. It certainly hyped me a lot more than the battle previews did about a month ago. So let's take a look at Menelaus, his faction effects, bonuses, and then we'll dive into the campaign. So this preview build, we are locked to normal, normal difficulty. Um, starting situation for Menelaus is normal. Victory conditions, we have total war victory, which is basically a domination victory, or the Homeric victory, which is a more sort of story-driven uh, focus on the Odyssey and all the events uh, around, obviously, uh, Troy and what have you. So you have some more uh, focused objectives there. Um, faction, we have unique um, faction mechanics, call to arms, and Spartan Colonies. I'll go into those in more detail when we get onto the campaign map itself. Uh, armies, uh, recommended playstyle for Menelaus. His roster combines devastating, heavily armoured infantry with effective slingers used for preemptive strikes. Uh, heroes, we have access to uh, defenders, fighters, and warlords. We don't have access to archers, uh, to the archer hero type at least. Uh, and unique faction units, we have light spear runners, axe champions, and heroic axe warriors and then finally a bonus for menelaus himself son of atreus and Europe. we have plus six percent to melee defense of all units this army and plus four to influence over a province this region so without further ado let's try and take helen back and we go are we mere playthings of the gods or do we plead divine influence to justify our foolish choices? He's taken her! He's taken my wife! You've risked the safety of Troy. Troy is my home now. You have my oath, brother. She will be returned to you. Brother, I can fight! Go. Seek shelter. There'll be plenty of fighting ahead. Helen's flight was a grave wound to Achaean pride. King Menelaus will have his revenge. And his brother will have his war with Troy, just as the gods intended. Hear me, spear-famed Menelaus. Brazen Prince Paris of Troy has dared to steal your wife. Paris of Troy must pay! Gold-rich Mycenae, ruled by your brother Agamemnon, will support your cause. Troy thinks to slight me, but they will pay the price. As well as exacting vengeance upon Troy, other matters demand your attention. Open rebellion has devastated the region of Aetis, where a pretender is trying to take power for himself. South of Aetis, mighty Tyrins holds Kithara Island, blocking your access to the treasures of Crete, which are beyond imagination. Consolidate your power at home. Urge Helen's suitors to honor the oath of Tyndarius in your defense, and wage war on the perfidious Trojan princeling. So here we are on the campaign map playing as Menelaus of Sparta. We're going to go through how they play, take a look at their unique faction mechanics, and we'll go through the various other uh, features and mechanics 
in Total War Saga. Troy, take a look at the resource system. We'll go through the religion system, divine will. Take a look at diplomacy. We'll go through the technology tree, the raw decrees. Take a look at construction, things like that in the various settlements that we have available to us. And then we'll just play through as many turns as we can with the time that we have remaining. As I said at the start of the video, we can play up to the first 40 turns in the campaign in this preview build. Probably won't get up to turn 40 today. We should get through a good number, give us a good idea of what to expect from the Total War Saga Troy campaign. So, how they play. Sparta. They have Spartan colonies. The people of Sparta are known for their intrepidity and ingenuity. Thus, Menelaus can colonize a raised settlement instantly without having to send an army there. As a result, colonization of remote settlements is more expensive. Call to arms. Many are willing to honor the oath to support Helen's husband in case anything happens to his wife. Because of that, Menelaus can recruit units from rosters available to his defensive or military allies. So we've got our first mission being issued, defeat the enemy. So we've got to take out the Spartan noble pretenders. Again, very standard in Total War campaign. You have uh, an initial battle to fight. So we'll go and do that in a little while. As I said, we're just going to focus on going through the new um, features, mechanics, and obviously returning features and mechanics from previous Total War games and just see how they're all presented in Troy. Get a good idea of how they all work and then we'll crack on, uh, you know, kind of doing this as a, as a standard Let's Play. I will put a timestamp down in the description and comment section if you want to skip finding out about all the new features and you just want to see you know just gameplay straight up going through let's play style so yeah feel free to check that out so yeah our objective is to defeat this army over here we'll get uh plus 250 food and plus 80 bronze so those are our two event messages over there so we'll just go we'll start we'll start down here take a look at what we've got we've got events we've got heroes and agents just got menelaus for now that denotes that he's an epic hero and he's a rank one we'll take a look at his skill tree as well because that's quite a i quite like the presentation of that in troy we can see our provinces and obviously other provinces nearby. Uh, we've got known factions. We can get, gives us a quick um, sort of snapshot of relations and any treaties or, um, you know, if status of war and things like that. And then we've got missions over there. We've got intern. Then we've also got notifications for what's available, what we need to do. Uh, reset map view. And we've also got notification uh, settings there. So obviously kind of the, the big glaring feature that you see sort of top left is that you don't just have gold as a resource in Total War Saga Troy. You now have five resources. You have food, you have wood, stone, bronze and gold. Um, and all of these are required to build certain combinations of buildings and certain combinations of these resources are required for I believe not only recruiting certain units but also maintaining some of them. I, you know, a basic way to look at it is early game your, your lowest tier units will just require food uh, but your higher tier units will probably require a combination of food, bronze and gold uh, and obviously buildings will require a combination of wood and stone depending on what they are. I mean if we go to Sparta we'll just go to the building browser. Obviously um, this is built on the Warhammer engine so if you've played to Warhammer 1 or 2 a lot of this should look very familiar and with that in mind one thing that I'm very interested in seeing is the features and things that we see added in for Troy it's gonna be very interesting to see what gets taken over to Total War Warhammer 3 when that comes out because this is you know a lot of kind of tweaks and changes to what we've seen in Warhammer uh, a lot of things being added in from other Total War games as well when we go to diplomacy you'll see some things from 3k have been added in there so it'll be interesting to see how many of these things that are present in Troy make their way over to Warhammer 3. Um, it's often the case with these solid games that, that CA experiment with new features uh, and mechanics. So honestly, in a way, that's kind of, for me, almost the more exciting thing uh, to take away from Troy. See what will end up in other Total War games, especially the Warhammer series, knowing that this is built on the, the Warhammer code. Um, so if we just take a look. So that requires uh, 860 uh, wood. I'm just going to see if there's one that requires multiple. Yeah, so here, the target stands requires a combination of bronze and wood. This is something I personally not really thought about in great detail before in a Total War game, but it makes such sort of natural sense that this is an area that they can easily kind of expand and add a little bit more depth in terms of economy management, having multiple resources that are required for building and for recruiting units. And also it means there's more things to do in diplomacy um, in terms of trade but also it makes you value um, settlements and also sort of dictates a little bit as to where you might expand because you're going to probably want to focus on expanding to areas where you can get 
resources that you don't have a lot of access to if you can't get them through diplomacy and what have you. We'll come back and we'll start building some stuff in a bit. But yeah, building browser, very similar, obviously, to the Warhammer system. We've got them in their, in their each separate sections and zones, as it were. Uh, obviously, landmarks have been replaced by special buildings. Um, and these, I believe, I don't know if these are unique to Sparta. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been able to play as any of the other factions. Um, obviously, I'm only allowed to show you Menelaus in this video and obviously Paris in a few days' time. So I guess we'll find out when we check out Paris, see how the, the, the Greek versus the Trojan um, building tree uh, differs. So if we go back, we can also see garrison details at Snapshot. You can rename settlements as well. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I don't know. Can we... We can rename units as well. That's cool. Uh, I missed that in in Three Kingdoms because you could only do that when they got to rank 10. Which, uh, yeah. Those of you who watch my Warhammer series will know I like naming my units. So we can see his starting units there. So local recruitment. We can do our local recruitment there. We've also then got his unique... Uh, Menelaus' is unique... Uh, one of his unique uh, faction mechanics. Call to arms. Basically global recruitment, but... You're unlike global recruitment, you're not just limited to the units that you can get from your specific faction. You get units that are available to your military and defensive allies. So it really does um, sort of uh, make you want to pursue military and defensive alliances as Menelaus if you're playing a campaign with him. So that's pretty interesting. So we'll come back to more of that in a little bit. Let's just start going through some of the other... Um, well, actually, we've, gone, we've talked about call to arms. Uh, so we can see here, actually, a snapshot. We can see our allied factions, um, Mycenae. Uh, and that will show us down here what units are available to recruit uh, because we are uh, defensive allies with with Agamemnon. Um, so at the moment, we can see there's only four that we can actually recruit. The rest of them, you can only recruit units once the, the allied faction can actually recruit them, which is cool. I like that. Um, but obviously, it gives you a good idea of uh, sort of what special... Or specialized units other factions might have that you might want to then incorporate into your army which really for sparta means that they can they can field the best of the best from you know anyone that they can ally with which is pretty cool but you can also you know use this screen to work out who you might want to ally with to make use of some of their some of their units that they have access to so uh, this might well dictate a fair bit of your your foreign po policy your your sort of uh acquisitions of uh, defensive and military alliances throughout your campaign which is pretty pretty cool i like that it gives you again just the mixing in more reasons to engage in diplomacy in in certain instances if you want to get some of these units it i like i like more ways to play total war rather than just full conquest like this gives you a, a fairly you know re uh, decent reason to not just conquer everyone because you, then you wouldn't be able to get all of their their specialist units so this gives you a good a good reason to have a have a more diplomatic focus for your campaign then we've also got spartan colonies um this just basically gives you an uh, a snapshot of which um raised settlements are in your line of sight because that's where you can do spartan colonies so you can only go to ones that are in in your line of sight but you can instantly jump to all of them so etis over there we'll, we won't colonize that one because we're going to go and march on that in a minute uh, I also over there, again, apologies if I'm butchering the pronunciation of anything in today's video. Feel free to correct me down below in the comment section. We can see that one over there. And obviously, the further away they are, um, they should cost more resources. But yeah, that's, actually, these guys are all roughly in the same sort of zone. It's only Etis that's the cheapest with 300 wood, 100 stone, and 500 food. The rest will cost 500 wood, 150 stone, and 800 food. Um, I think, is that the... Is that the capital it is so that might be a good one to get first and that's that sort of cluster of islands over here um in uh so marta what else can we do there was another one there yeah, lapa down here so I'm, I'm hoping that we can get down to um to this section here and go after uh, i believe it's nosos down here uh, we'll take a look at diplomacy work it out yeah, Nosos are down here. I can't. If I can, can I collapse this? No, I can't. But they are just hidden there. We can see it if we click on that. Actually, uh, I think. No, it's uh, it's not Nosos, is it? It's um, Apteron. Okay, but yeah, we could we could always have a little foothold there. I'm going to conquer through their territory and grab all that. 
But I actually think it'd probably be a good idea to start with that provincial capital over here. So we can colonize that one if we want to. It doesn't matter if we do it through this screen or um, clicking on it directly. But let's um, left click to colonize this settlement. Boom. And that will cost us a fair bit of our, our starting resources. But let's go for it. Again, not necessarily aiming to play this the most efficiently or effectively just want to experiment and show you guys what you can what you can do in a, in a troy campaign as I said, i've had limited hours uh with this preview build and i've only got uh, a few hours left at the time of recording this uh just to play through it so yeah there's still going to be many things that i will probably miss uh, i won't kind of fully understand until i i play it again but there we go so exceptional warriors found um that female creatures with a strange reputation inhabit this place it might be become formidable allies if we make it worth their while. Mm, okay. That's pretty cool. I don't know how we how we utilize that unless there's a unique building that we can perhaps get. Um Oh yeah, sworn fighters, there we go. Plus I recruit rank of elite units. Um I think that just gives us Oh no. Oh no, it's the, the harpy fiends, that's what we get. So the harpy lookout gives us harpies. And then harpy fiends. Sweet. Master Ambushers. That's pretty cool. So yeah, all, all through the special lines. So we definitely want to get that there. Uh, it's currently all ruined though. And we can't build anything because we are out of uh, wood. We get 700 a turn right now. I like that it clearly shows you what you're getting each turn uh, for each resource. Uh, obviously, we can trade for all of that. We've got the ruined port as well. Uh, but you put that there. One thing I will say, something that's really, I uh, really like a uh, effect they have is when you start sailing through the map and revealing more areas, um, it does this cool, like burning effect through it. So we'll show that when we start sailing around. But it is really, really nice. I mean, let's take off the UI for a moment. Without a doubt, for me, this is the best looking Total War game campaign map um, ever. I don't know how well this will translate into, you know, being recorded and then encoded on YouTube. But honestly, even if it doesn't look that great on YouTube, oh my, in person, this looks fantastic. They have done an amazing job. Uh, I mean, I think over the last few years, the last few Total Wars, just CA's campaign art team just been getting better and better. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to go over the water, just the reflections, the light on the water and the waves. It looks stunning. Hopefully that comes across in the video. But I mean, just like panning across here. It looks beautiful. Okay, I'm playing this on, you know, full ultra settings. Uh, I can't, I don't know if I've already said this or not, but I'm playing this on extreme unit size as well. Uh, so that's, that's made a return. Uh, so it was introduced in 3K. So that's here in Troy. So again, another thing I'd like to see in Warhammer 3, extreme unit size, please. Uh, that would be grand. But yeah, graphically on the campaign map, amazing stunning battles i would say definitely very impressive on the on the battle side of things uh maps as well in battles very good too anyway let's uh, we've done call to arms we've done spartan colonies we've shown how that works let's talk about religion divine will so there's a lot to kind of wrap your head around here in, in terms of choosing which god you want to dedicate to you know probably haven't worked out the the best combination uh of them so far but there's the, Depending on your playstyle, there's a there's a lot to choose from of, uh, you know, which buffs you want to go for. So you have uh, two choices to interact with the gods. You have prayer, which gives you a, you know, a kind of a low tier effect um, at, you know, not too great a cost. And then you have a het, het, uh which gives you favor, which will help move you up the, the tiers of uh, sort of worship favor to the gods so you've got respected at 50 200 at celebrated and 350 worshipped uh, and that dictates the tier of effects that you get from dedicating to, to to the gods so you can see for zeus for instance uh, at tier one uh respected you get might of the thunderbolt which gives plus 25 percent to melee attack of club units uh, own armies faction wide and plus 15 percent to missile damage of javelin units own armies faction wide then Father of Heroes at Celebrated when you've got 200 favor. Uh, there's a recruitment cost reduction. You've got Messenger of Thunder traits to all newly recruited agents faction wide. You've got Descendant of Zeus trait to all newly recruited heroes as well. And then Worshipped Tier 3, you've got Regal Presence that unlocks the recruitment of the Minotaur. So that's where you get your, your sort of mythic units from. Um, which, yeah, faction wide recruitment. 
plus one to happiness per defensive ally uh, or rather per defensive or military alliance up to 10. So that's actually that works quite well for Menelaus actually because you'll probably want to have a fair few defensive and military allies uh, and, and, and alliances all set up in your campaign. So yeah, they obviously there's a whole host of them. I'll hover over them all briefly. So if you want to pause the video and have a good old read of all of their different effects uh, at the different stages, you can. I won't go through all of them because otherwise we'll never get through uh, any any turns at this rate. But yeah, there's, there's so much. To it. And obviously, we'll just have a quick look at each of the prayers as well. So if prayer to Zeus, plus five to deal valuation for all diplomatic agreements except barters. Uh, Ares is uh, a morale penalty for enemies. A prayer to Apollo is success chance of agent actions and campaign map line of sight around temples of Apollo. Uh, Athena is recruit rank for units. Poseidon is immune to deep seas attrition. Uh, and prayer to Aphrodite is plus 25% growth and uh, faction wide and plus three to happiness. Which I think that's that's kind of a nice a nice one to get early game. Happiness and growth is always good. Uh, and if we get her up to the respected tier, love of all people, plus 10 to diplomatic relations with all factions, plus 200% to all effects of organized games, commandment faction-wide. Let's go for a prayer to Aphrodite again. Might not be the most effective, might not be the best thing to do right now, just spending all, our all of our resources like this, but we're just trying out features. Very much um, just want to, to test things out. And I think that that takes a turn to, to enact, um, so it won't appear in the kind of effects pool for our faction right now. So we can see King of Sparta, we've got... Uh, various um, diplomatic uh, buffs and debuffs. There are mainly actually debuffs there with it's just ba basically with Troy and their allies. That's fine. So yeah, raw decrees. This is our tech tree in Total War Saga Troy. Admin efficiency is your research rate basically. So you can see there's a couple already unlocked. So we already have raw bronze which gives us plus 90 bronze per turn faction wide and raw granaries plus 280 food per turn. I don't know if all factions start with those two unlocked or depending on the faction character you play as have different ones unlocked depending on who they are that that would make the most sense um so we've got treasure hall there which is plus 20 gold because we're currently not getting any gold per turn um so we probably want to get that soon but from my play testing so far i found that going for royal timber early is a pretty good shout because you just need wood for ruddy everything which um yeah so always good to get more wood so we'll chuck that in there start researching that you can queue up um, tech, so yeah, we can go all out there. 25 turns to get that if we want to. But no, we'll just go straight through Raw Timber. Then we'll probably go get Treasure Hall uh, afterwards. Um, and then I think objectives. Obviously, you've got the, the Domination Victory, Total War Victory. And you've got the Americ Victory, which is the more narrative. You know, follow the follow the Odyssey, as it were. Um, and, uh, you know, follow more uh, specific objectives, which is probably, I would say this, this is the one most people probably play through. And then you can always, I guess, continue through for a, a full domination one if you want to. But this one will be the, the, you know, the most, if you want to make the most out of the story uh, of Troy and everything that's going on. So let's, uh, let's have a battle, shall we? Let's, let's dive into the action. So if you jumped ahead in the timestamp, this is where we are. We've talked about all the new features or we haven't talked about diplomacy, but that, that's fine. We'll go through diplomacy in a minute. We're going to have a battle. In we go almost kind of like a one ring effect around them when they're when they're going on we will need to fight this one this first one but we always like to fight the uh, the first battle fairly even which is good so uh, let's jump on in it says there at the top there no god is on your side um i think that's to do with uh, if you've increased favor enough then you'll see the effects there it'll just give you a snapshot of kind of a reminder of what to expect um battles have changed a bit since the the battle preview build I played previously what, about a month or so ago and that was I was allowed to show you guys uh, a battle between Hector and Achilles uh, now there are some issues still with battles um, have been you know myself and other content creators reporting back to the devs on these issues and obviously this is still a development in progress build um, but you know I always, I always take that with a you know a fair pinch of salt because I don't know how old this build is, how fair representation this is of the final game. I mean, it should be a fairly close representation because by the time this video goes out, it's going to be, what, less about three weeks until the game releases. Um, so in some cases, I kind of feel like there's still a lot for them to do, a lot for them to work on, um, which does worry me a little bit in terms of battles. Campaign, so far, I've been fairly impressed with what I've played. And... I, I said, I think at the start of this video, and I've said previously, when anyone, whenever anyone's asked me about my thoughts on Troy, for me, honestly, from what I played in the previous battle previews, for me, 
whether Troy's going to be a success or not is it whether it's got a good a solid campaign gameplay in terms of mechanics features and just solid you know interaction between you and the ai um so far i'm i'm getting hyped the campaign has actually done its done its uh done its work on me it's it's hyped me more than the battle preview um definitely more excited for troy now i'm starting to get uh more of the kind of design choices they've gone for in terms of the the campaign side of things however battles for me are still disappointing uh we might well see it occur in this but basically at the moment it seems to be an utter coin toss when you fight battles as to whether there's any kind of unit um collision at all which is not good um this is an this is an era of infantry on infantry combat uh, you know they should have collision sorted you know very solidly the, the issues i found with this with this build of the game is that units will just run kind of and mix in between each other they won't just smash against one another and you know hit each other's shields and things like that they just tend to run through we'll, we'll start this battle and um we'll see whether that that happens um but the devs are aware of it and it is something they are working on getting sorted so hopefully you guys will never experience this. Hopefully, you'll experience brilliant unit um, collision. But, yeah, just kind of, that that's my main concern. Hey, guys. Editing Lionheart here. Quick heads up. CA have confirmed they've now fixed the collision issue that myself and other content creators were experiencing in this preview build. So, hopefully, we'll be able to see some awesome unit collision uh, when I next get more early access. Elements of battles are very rewarding. I mean look at this map it looks awesome and i haven't experienced it yet but i've been told i won't i won't fully reveal kind of what it was but i've been told that there are some absolutely amazing ambush maps in troy um and from the screenshots that i saw from another creator that that, that shared it from their preview build uh oh my days it looked awesome i feel if ca can get on top of these battle issues with troy it could be it could be very very good but i'm still so hesitant to kind of you know throw myself into into almost loving troy the campaign is swaying me though and swaying me hard i like what they're doing um but battles are still uh, not great i mean i'm having fun in them but and i should say the pacing is way better now um compared to the battle preview build they're lasting a lot longer. They're not over in a, in like three, four minutes. The enemy hold the high ground. They do indeed. To rush in when they have such an advantage is to invite disaster. In fact, when I fought this battle before, uh, doing a bit of testing, they never. This map was. I think we fought on a slightly different map. They did not take the high ground like this. Uh, so I'm going to try and flank them. So we should probably take a look at some of these 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 units here. We'll show their stats. Uh, Laconian militia. They are light. Uh, lightweight class, shielded, swift-footed, so we need to try and run around with them to flank. We've got our Laconian Axemen. They are armor-piercing, excellent armor-piercing damage, in fact. And we've got these light spear runners, which are one of the unique units to Menelaus. And these guys, um, they're shielded, they can switch weapons, which again... I know we've kind of had this in previous Total War games, where you could give an alt, alt left click attack or alt right click attack, and they'd sort of switch from, say, bows to, to spears or swords or something like that, but... I really do like... I love the animation as well. I think that's really nice. Let's get you up there. Over you go. So we need to tie up those slingers. We've got Menelaus. He's got a the War God's Call ability. Which can actually kind of... It taunts them into just fighting or focusing on one person. So I'm going to get him to do that. draw their draw their fire and then my slingers should be able to pick off the enemy slingers not getting hit too much and then we'll move up here get ready for a flank I don't believe I'm allowed to show my graphic settings, but I've currently got arrow trails set to 29%. Dead from afar. 
um you can drop them all the way down to to zero the foe has shited your hidden units so it'll be obviously a lot closer i think to draw them in yet that's fine we can we can run them in there we go so they're now sort of taunted into just engaging with menelaus the foe has shited your hidden units oh no what shame get ready with the axeman slinger is going in there i'll have him tie them all up and then we'll flank on round your hero is under attack yeah they've sent theirs in so these two should just start sort of dueling there's no as far as i can tell there's no dedicated duel button like there is in 3k but when two heroes um engage they start sort of doing match combat attacks and animations but yeah they're going to charge downhill Go on, chase these guys quick. We've got their backs turned. Engage, engage, engage. Yeah, keep fighting. Keep busy. You guys charge in here. And we'll see what the collision's like today. I mean, with these with these wider spacing units, I can kind of understand them running through other units a bit more but i've seen it with you know more heavily armored spears and what have you they should sort of smash and, and meet their lines a bit more evenly like that that's not too bad that's okay i'd say i think it's because these guys are they've got a loose spacing to them you keep chasing those javelins slings move on up here you guys keep on fighting. Yeah, so their their lines are actually holding fairly well. I swear I'm not just uh, <laughs> dunking on the game. <laughs> I have seen some big issues. <laughs> there we go. They've just broken. Right. Let's. Uh, I think it's it's probably only when you get a, a full on charge on charge that the collision doesn't work. But we'll we'll have other battles where we'll see if it. Because as I said, it, it's not it's not been a hundred percent of the time, but it's been enough of the time All right. to be a bit worrisome. Right, they're gonna go for a massive charge in here. We're gonna switch the full, you know, melee offensive mode here. They've also got javelins, so we'll let them throw a couple of javelins into the backs of these guys. You can see they've got a fair bit of ammo. But now with their shields behind, they do more they do more damage. So let's charge them in here. Have a watch of this. Right, that's an instant, an instant break. You guys are keeping them busy over there. Keep chasing them. There we go. They've run away. Axeman, chase him down. You guys get up here and pump those slingers down. That, get my slingers to counterfire them. Menelaus. Keep fighting this guy. The enemy chose there we go. He's broken. So that should give us victory. Is close enough to take. They're not completely breaking yet. The skirmish is over here. Something as well, you'll see. There's there's quite a cool um, sort of post battle screen. You'll see in a moment. We can end the battle there. Close victory. End the battle. That took it took seven seven and a half minutes, which is longer than I'd, I think that's about the same sort of time I'd expect from Warhammer. So yeah, this is the little animation that you get to see every every single battle.
I think that was a reasonable time for that battle. It felt it felt decent enough. Obviously, there's still quite a lot of them uh, alive. They just sort of broke. Um, in larger battles, I found the enemy, the morale that does seem to go through the Warhammer sort of tiered systems of they'll break, run away, rally, come back a good two or three times in, in quite a lot of battles. So we've got Take Them On, which gives us replenishment. We've got Spill Their Blood, which gives us a plus 8% to morale of own units um, for two turns. And then we've got Lives as Barter, um, which gives us 200 38 food to our treasury um considering we're probably gonna go colonize a settlement um i'm just gonna take the food because we shouldn't have anyone else to fight here Hard work pays off. So we defeated the enemy we get food and we get bronze and we now get our next mission we've got to maintain 12 units and we've got six currently and that'll give us 300 food and 100 bronze and we gained a heavy helmet so plus five percent to the morale of all units this army kill them in battle destroy the faction because yeah it's just a slight one so actually that's a, that's a good segue into showing another thing i've not looked at yet which is skills equipment again very very a lot of a lot of warhammer um you know you can see kind of making its way into troy because it's built on the warhammer uh code so skills are all arrayed like this i don't necessarily prefer this to the warhammer tree sort of or branching system i think that's potentially a little bit clearer but it's still fairly decent you can see it goes from level one all the way through to rank 14 so i'm assuming that's the the highest hit although actually you still get another point after that so maybe rank 15 is the actual the highest one actually no it's probably not i lie there's 14 there's 14 ranks but you actually get um to spend two points per per rank so that would take it up to 28 so maybe it's, I don't know, if maybe you get extra points after that to go back and do other buffs or what have you. But yeah, 28 would make the most sense. I don't actually know if uh, it might, the TA might have said somewhere, but I've, uh, I've not seen that. But yeah, so you can choose to go into either one. Uh, obviously, choosing one locks off the other. So we can't then go into Dread of Ares if we go for Assault and Battery. You can reset it. Uh, not, you can't go like six levels deep and then do a reset of all your points. You can just reset it where you place your point before you sort of accept them and go off the menu but yeah we've got dread of aries which gives us the dread of aries ability and plus two percent to heroes hit points dread of aries does a, a targeted a sort of hex on a, a, a single enemy unit uh, for 25 seconds minus 20 morale and minus 15 percent stamina and then you basically have the choice of upgrading it one way or you know one of two ways you can go for a, a missile vulnerability which adds missile vulnerability uh, to that hex or you can reduce melee attack um, so you kind of get to customize the ability a little bit, which is which is cool. Sort of crafting your abilities to suit your your playstyle. I'm going to go for assault and battery though, because that gives plus two percent to the serious hit points, and for um, as well, it gives you it, it costs you rage, which you build up by fighting with your heroes. I didn't touch on that in the previous battle because we we didn't have any rage abilities. Uh, but yeah, basically, um, assault and battery gives you uh, the assault and battery ability. Uh, which will cost six rage per second. But while it's active, you've got plus 40% armor piercing damage. So I'm going to go for that. The next level, we can choose to either go and reduce the rage cost of assault and battery from six rage per second to three at the same plus 40% armor piercing. Or for the same cost, six rage per second, we can increase the armor piercing damage from plus 40% to plus 80% um so yeah again you can you can sort of specialize your abilities so you get sort of two points per per rank but yeah i don't i don't know what the max rank is but there's 14 ranks of uh abilities and slash buffs that you can um that you can go through but i guess 20 for 28 i get if you're putting two points in per per rank um or maybe they'd make it up to a sort of an even th uh, rounded 30 i should say um but i don't know maybe, maybe you can go up to 40 i don't know what you'll do with the points though what you'll do with the rank um after that to be honest so maybe it just goes up to 28 don't actually know uh, right so we got uh we did get a heavy helmet but we, we start off with menelaus's shield so we don't want to swap that out so we'd give that to another character but you can have a um an armor you can have a weapon and you can have a mount and then you've got followers and items so there's more items you can um you can give your characters and uh, followers as well. We've got Menelaus's belt though. 
plus 10% to morale of all units and blessed leader's ability minus two turns the recovery time of heroes when wounded which is pretty useful and also this gives us a snapshot of battle effects campaign effects as well um so yeah, that's skills equipment and then details tell us his traits as well again warhammer system of traits so a lot of these will have a scale that they can go up sort of positive buffs or negative buffs depending on their actions in the campaign again i i, re I really like that system i really like that system so yeah, again the, and you can see the the skills are split across abilities units campaign and personal um so yeah not the red ones are will give you abilities yellow is personal green is buffs to units uh five is campaign so there's probably one in here um is there one in here for extra campaign movement range like i'm thinking root marcher in warhammer there isn't one actually but yeah so rather than being able to choose whatever you want you have to go through these tiers it's not quite the same as warhammer but yes it's, it's an interesting skill system i think it works we did well. fairly well from what i've, what I've encountered it so far fall. you've got movement over on the left screen here uh, you can take a look at their equipment um just sort of from that bar there it will show you what they've got and in terms of stances we've got encamp stance we've got raiding stance ambush stance and uh force march we need to move down and grab uh, etis so i'm gonna force march and go to that and rush on down so you can see there's a little the little effect on the map it'll, it'll be better when we're sailing through the seas um to see the map burning effect which is just really really nice um right what can we build what do we want to go for um food is very important to us uh also one final thing we should talk about influence um we'll go to sparta for this uh 85 percent that ties into your um to your resources although we can't get anything can we just not get resources at sparta they yeah they're all so resources are done outside of your provincial capital unless i guess there's a unique building for it so um you need to go to this one you need to go to this one so yeah influence has an effect on your resources that you produce so each each settlement you can see what they produce uh, so this one is a stone quarry settlement so when we go to the resources panel uh we can see that we will get stone uh, and there's there's five different uh ways that we can basically get stone uh, all have slightly different impacts on various other features and systems but the one I want to focus on right now is this uh, stone miners tents, which you can see gives us plus 20 stone per turn, but high influence bonus plus 25 stone per turn. Um, you get a high influence bonus if your influence, uh, your, your culture is 60% or higher. So it's currently 85% uh, is uh, dropping by 0.3% per turn. Uh, and you can gain influence through, uh, I think it's through temples go back to sparta there's lots of different temples depending on which god you want to put it to oh no this is not through temple administration rather there we go that gives influence you've got to kind of balance that with public order and things and then you've got all of these temples which yeah that's uh <laughs> just choosing whichever god you want to favor within a certain region and province lots of different buffs and bonuses and that unlocks the priestess as well the hero you've got uh, envoys and you've got spies uh to go out to and then you've got um i think if you've got like champions or diff there's different hero classes for your characters as well for recruiting new armies there's a lot going on there's a lot going on um but yes let's just go back over here we can't actually build this we need more wood but i would i while i can utilize that um that high influence bonus that's what i'd sort of go for we can go for the stonemason's lodge which gives us crazy amounts of stone plus 88 but that is a minus 70 percent growth so unless you balance that with growth look at that there is the the small uh mountain uh apoi apoikia which also gives you a high influence bonus that's good too but that costs you so yeah but you'll be thinking why would you why would you not go for that over the stone miners tents that only costs uh wood and bronze whereas this one costs you uh stone wood and then the higher upgrades a lot of gold so some of these things you'll probably definitely have to come back later on in your campaign and when you've got more resources more of the uh, a wider range of resources probably swap your resource production from the sort of more basic production 
to the more advanced stuff like like the the mountain buildings here because that's yeah that'll get you a crazy amount of stone but you'll need a lot of gold a lot of stone a lot of wood for that uh, let's see if we can go about building the stone miners tents this turn we just need to get 200 wood from someone so let's take a look at diplomacy so you've got three kingdoms um style of quick deal um and negotiate but it's presented in the the warhammer sort of um table layout um so you've got peace treaty you've got offer confederation uh, military alliance defensive alliance military access or non-aggression so yeah quick deals um peace treaty we can see we're at war with um uh the the tyrans or off confederation everyone they're all happy but they're minus 100 so then they're not going to accept confederation right now we've got to get a lot stronger uh for military alliance we can see that um Pylos and Nosos. Uh, actually, not Nosos. They're minus 1.4. But Pylos would be up for a military alliance. So I'm going to go for that. We've already got non-aggression and military access. I expect to reach an agreement with Sparta. Well, I would like some wood. Can I have some? I find that they really do... Yeah, they really do value their resources. Probably early on when they don't have much. So you can see here, they've got kind of quite... Red, I'm assuming, you know, it goes through a system of green. They don't have much of it. Um... So they're not willing to give that away. Red, they've it's a surplus because they've, they've got a lot of it. And then the grey, they've got a, a medium amount of it. So I think I think that's how it works. Um, but yeah, I mean, what I could do is probably trade some gold because gold for for wood is always um, well, gold for anything is always going to work. If I pop that up to two hundred, which is what I need, I might need my gold. This might be very silly of me to give away my gold like this. Um, Wow, so going for, can I, I can't I can't do 0.5s, so no. <laughs> Aguahar X10 is back. Uh, so we'll go up to 23 just so we can get that wood for this turn and we get a uh, a military alliance in there and we'll agree. Quite so. Quite so, indeed. So we'll go, um, we'll decline that and we'll just go back see if anyone else wants a military alliance. No, what about a defensive alliance? Okay, we're, we're close with a couple. Military access... Nos I don't want to because I'm actually thinking of going after Nosos. Um, because they'll end up down here. Uh Pythia, that is Achilles faction. So let's get friendly with Achilles. I'm happy with that. Uh non-aggression pact as well. I can do that. Can't get an alliance with him, but this should be increasing his attitude, so hopefully in a few turns we'll be able to get an alliance with him. We can do a war target with uh, Agamemnon if we wanted to. They're currently, we're both at war with these guys. So, yeah, let's set them a war target. So we can just do off this menu here. We'll tell Agamemnon, go take that. It's near your land anyway. Go, go have a great time. I don't think there's any other deals we can really go for. Salamis. Um... You are non aggression with Mycenae, so yeah, we'll throw that in. This is a good time to a talk. Military access. I wonder if I can do single bar. The thing is, they, they, oh, they can get a little bit of food. They do seem to. Can't get much from them early on. I think it's probably just because it's the first few turns they don't have a lot. Well, I'll take some food from you. 11. Well worth the effort. I think that's everything we can do in terms of diplomacy. But we've now got enough wood that we can go in here and we can build that stone miner's tents. So we'll get that straight in there. Uh, we've got ports. So much you get from there. So ports actually increase resources from this province. Um, to trade Because there's no there's no trade agreements in 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 Troy. Um, because there's multiple resources, you just have to have, you know, trading all of that. I don't know if maybe there's some background uh, trade. Because I can't actually see. We haven't actually got a dedicated, um, like economy panel as far as i can see unless i oh no treasury there we go we do have one so trade reports yeah there is uh no yeah background trade it's all because you've got five resources now it's all on you making individual deals um so you'll probably spend a, a fair bit more time tweaking if you've got loads of uh, surplus food being produced you'll probably um want to you know set up some decent deals with that um because it's now not just a unified gold amount that you need for everything. 
you're going to want to work through all those. Anyway, we are like halfway through this video and we've not done our first turn. Oh dear. Well, in, in my Paris gameplay, I'm not going to go through all the features like I have done today. Uh, so in the Paris gameplay, we should get through a fair few more turns. That's, that is my hope. Uh, and that'll be out on the 24th. No kingdom flourishes and endures through military conquest alone. Grow and maintain your settlements through construction. Their resources can then be harnessed to serve the war effort. Boom. Um, so yeah, objective, uh, issue a raw decree. I think we've kind of done that, haven't we? Prayer answered, so we've now got for four turns, prayer to Aphrodite plus 25 to grow faction wide plus three happiness. Cool, cool, cool. This needs to be a thriving settlement upgrade. Any settlement building, we get wood and stone. So yeah, early on we get quite a lot to set ourselves up. So we should probably then look to upgrade something here. We need population surplus though. Currently got zero. Uh, we're going to go colonize Etis when we go to normal stance. And colonize. Oh, we don't have enough stone. Next turn. Although maybe, maybe we can do a cheeky trade deal and get enough stone. Um... What would be nice, actually, is if they added in a way so you could search... Ah, actually, can I can I search by stone? Wealth stone. That's just that's just region, isn't it? That, yeah. If I could filter these guys by resources so I could see who's got what. But let's see if we just click through... In fact, actually, we're going to negotiate and let's go by attitude. Friendliest ones to me. So find anyone that's got a lot of stone. Agamemnon's got a fair bit. Of course, I will listen to my Let's brother. Let's see. Oh, we can we can throw in military access and a military alliance because we we just had defensive alliance with him so far. Let's see if I can just get in some stone. Oh yeah, he's keen to throw out some stone. Uh, I mean, I might need it for other things. I don't think you're going to give me wood, are you? Oh no, you're 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 far less uh, tight than. Oh no, you're a bit. Don't need that much. Far less tight than uh, was it these guys? Or no, it was was it? I can't remember who I traded with. Was it Achilles? I can't. I yeah, I've forgotten. What about 92, 91? There we go. That's the Haggle Heart way. Right, boom. Not bad. So we've got a single bar there. We've got military alliance and military access. Agree. Certainly. Good. Right now we can colonize this. Boom. So we've now completed the. Uh, oh no, we haven't completed the province. Damn it, it's a four. It's a four region one. We've got to go over to uh, uh, Kithia, Kithara. I'm gonna. I'm gonna continue to butcher all these names. Pronunciation guide. Yes, please. So we also need to recruit units. Uh, call to arms. We should have a few more available, so we can get the bowmen from. Oh, it tells you which faction they're coming from as well. Mycenae or uh, Pylos. Club warriors we get from Mycenae, which is good. Uh, our slingers are pretty decent, but I think just the, we just need a core line of spearmen, which are medium oh, class. Understood. They're going to take two turns to recruit. That's all we can get right now because they cost a fair bit of food. Um, that's their upkeep as well. Top one's their upkeep, bottom one is their, their initial cost. I could go for militia, but I won't. I'll just save. Um, that's all we need to do there. So our decree kind of popped. Um, well, actually, no, it's, it's we take six turns to enact, doesn't it? That's what it is. So we will we will get that mission. It's not instant. Um, let's go back to over here. We need to build you up, but we need we do need more wood, more wood required. So let's head back. You've got a fair bit of wood, Mister. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Let's see. So you can do barter agreement, which is for either five turns or ten turns. I kind of wouldn't mind them offering you the opportunity to increase that slider. Oh, I don't know. All the way up to, say, 20, 30 odd turns. Just really give you a bit more control over it. Because ultimately, it just depends whether you can balance the scales. Um, We want some wood, don't we? I don't really want to give him anything, actually, per turn. So we'll go for a single barter. What I, what I need, again, is about 200, isn't it? Oh boy. Um, what have I got? I've got bronze that I'm not really using a lot of. 60 do 60 does a fair bit. Let's offer 100 bronze and then a teeny tiny bit of gold. Tip the scale. 
Of course. And I'm not I'm not thinking long term here. This could this could be really bad for us. If we trade away all of our bronze. But let's get that in there. Then we need more wood, which yeah, we might get close to it next turn. My goal is to at least get through ten turns. <laughs> As I said, if you want to, if you want to see probably more more focus on just the gameplay, make sure you tune in on the twenty fourth for my Paris gameplay because I won't need to go through all the resources stuff because I'll say at the beginning of that video if you want to know how all the features and mechanics work, go check out the Menelaus video. And that's why I wanted to do this all in one video just so that we could experience all in one where hopefully it makes a bit more sense. So we've upgraded the settlement because we repaired the broken one over there, which is good. That's given us Control a lot of... of every settlement in a province will give you complete oh, there we dominion go. over all who live there. Expand your holdings and bring more of the Aegean under your I heel. will. Um, thirst for conquest. Maintain control of one province. Yep, yeah, that's what we're going to do very soon. Uh, we're going to get that port in there. We are also going to... I've not done a temple yet. Uh, I feel like I could get some agents out. I'm not sure I'm going to get a chance, though. Food per turn. What what are you focused on? You, you're a provincial capital, so you don't do resources. You're about food, and you're all about that bronze, which is held by the Akis. Okay. Um, How is our public order and everything? So we've got happiness there. Our influence is pretty good. So what have we got? We've got this here. That's all of that. Gate bastions that provides garrison. Uh, from what I understand, minor settlements can never get walls, only your provincial capitals. So I guess it's more a reflection of the, the age we're playing in. You know, they, they couldn't build walls everywhere. Um, I believe settlement maps are meant to change, though. Okay, so we can't get the, the harp. It would be cool if we could get the harpies, but we need some more gold. Um, happiness. That might be not a terrible idea. That does influence. We don't need that. That's just growth. Yeah, let's get the vineyard in there. Try out a spy. Agents. I would say back at Sparta, we've got recruit agent options. So you've got epic agents. Um, you've got the gorgon. You can get satyrs. And you can get seers. Which each have their own unique abilities and what have you. Precess, spy, and envoy, though. Fairly standard. And then recruiting new heroes. So here's where you get your different types. So you've got warlords. Um, and I believe each of these can come in variations of three. So you've got a warlord commander. Um, you've got a defender veteran. You've got a fighter ravenger. You've got a fighter vanquisher. You've got a uh, fighter champion. Those are the, the three ones. Uh, yeah, warlord warmonger. Warlord mentor. So mentors, I believe, are, are best at... Um, and then you've also got their unique traits over here so this is used the loyalty system uh from basically dark elves and skaven so that's that's how that links in here um but you can see there their cost there that supply lines are in um which yeah not not the best system i'm hoping that's something they i, I doubt it'll be changed for release but maybe post release in an update they rework supply lines because i know they were experimenting with the proving grounds beta in warhammer 2 to actually remove supply lines or to, to tweak how they work. So I'm kind of hoping that's something they move away from. But it's probably more of a, an inherited system from using the Warhammer code than anything else. And then you've got Defenders Protectors. So yeah, each of these um, have their own... Can I go to help pages? Oh yeah, we can. I don't know if I'm allowed to show any of that stuff though. So I won't... Um, <laughs> I won't go through all of that. But yes, that will tell you each of them having their own unique bit. I think actually hovering over each of these here will tell us what they do pretty sure though the the most offensive one is that the fighter vanquisher though and you've got uh immoral as his trait but yeah we're not gonna recruit another character just yet probably can't afford it anyway i uh, don't have everything we need to build there so what we need to do actually is recruit some more units local recruitment we can get some spears actually so we didn't need to do that call to arms one uh, uh whoops that's not a unique one uh some more slingers would be good let's get some cheap slingers in um, that'll get us up to... Uh, let's go for four. Need to build up his army so we can go over here. We'll at least see if we can conquer all of a province. We need some more battles. We've had a good old look. At the campaign. For now. Uh, what's your garrison likely? Fairly tough. I think we'll get up to the 12 we need. Let's get... 
yeah, more of you guys in there. That'll get us up to 12, and then I think we'll press the attack. I'd like to get some bowmen. That'd be cool. We need a lot of food, though. Right, is there anything else we can build on up? No, we're getting that vineyard, so we'll get a spy out next turn. Uh, Etis, you can upgrade the farming village. That also... Farming village. Oh, so it's a ruined one as well, so that'll stop producing us food. Get that in there. Good, good. Muster the troops. Boom. The splendor of your settlements reflects your growing reputation. Fully develop your capital. And it will project your majesty the length and breadth of the known world. Huzzah. Right, so the Shining City, we basically saying get a settlement to max max tier. And we'll unlock uh, an elite unit available in our special recruitment pool. We have to get you all the way up to tier 5 or one of these to tier 3, I think. That would count. Um, but we definitely want to get food in there. Arable land. And we get the bonus from that food there. But that one would get us way more, but it requires... Um, actually, we have enough stone. We just don't have enough wood. I could even I could hold out on wood and then build that. That would be good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out for wood on that. We're about to get some wood here. Let's um sell here. Watch the the map reveal the effect there because it looks really cool. I uh, only showed only showed a tiny teeny tiny bit of it. That's a bit of a shame. Not possible. Into the fray. That won't work. Yeah, okay, I might actually. I'm gonna force march. Oh, can I only force march if I go around there? Wow. Okay. Can't recruit in this stance. They've got six units. And in their garrison. Oh, they've got a few more down there. I might need to recruit a few more units actually. To, to go through. But yeah, we're just going to save up our resources. I've been told you can sail straight for Troy in this build. But you will get wrecked by the, the garrison. No question. Oh, you're recruiting up as well. Okay, Always okay. Yeah, those bowmen are nice, but they cost so much food. So I'd rather just get more backbone. Oh, we can get these shielded spearmen. Good defense as well. They can see they cost bronze. Uh, we can also get the clubmen. They cost a lot. I think we'll just go Let's for some getting some axes in there. Although you're real, it's real expensive as well. So I might as well go for maximum shield boys. And yeah, we're just going to save that wood. One more turn. They might come out and attack me. Rival power Hello. Chain. You, a single bastard, you're offering me some bronze for some military access. This is Argos. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. And the Arcadians, you are just demanding stuff from me. Uh, yeah, that's that's not gonna fly. No, nothing in this build with AI might is and with barely maximum strength. Okay, we're gonna get up to 20, 20 units in a single army, and we get oh loads of stuff. Nice. I think that is perhaps a, a, another hungry. caveat of this build. Uh, AI is very hungry for uh, resources. Renowned Slingers. Ooh, they're medium class. Uh, what you need is I just need a load of infantry. So, you can only get that one though because it's just so much food. I think I'm just going to wait a turn. I might have to pull back and get more troops because these guys are building up quite strong. Didn't realize actually how many they had there. Probably should have stayed back here. Uh, but we'll keep that call to arms going. But anyway, let's get that really nice food production going there because that's that's really what we need right now a lot of food production let's blast through some turns finally lionheart goes through turns <laughs> that's the most turn gameplay we've had in 50 minutes you want military access um i mean i'm probably going to turn on you guys eventually but you're offering me some food and right now we are hungry boys raw decree nice i guess there's more wood Royal Timber now being issued. Epic mission issued. Fractured Kingdom. Recruit five units via call to arms. Okay. Uh, we get a, a call to heroes plus 20 so it might relations with the uh, Aegeans. Or, oh no, the Achaeans rather. 
Uh, bonus experience, 500 from NLS. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, you've got 12. I am going to have to probably pull back. Never. Set. Making landfall. So I can Master. recruit units Ship quicker and go with a full full 20 stacks. Actually, it would be nice if we could, yeah, finish things up with a, with a big old battle. That'd be good. Uh, you're telling me you can build more things, like your farming settlement upgraded. Yeah, more, more upgrades there, although that's more growth, isn't it? We can get our spy. We can. Let's... No. Oh, no, we can't get our spy yet. We need to upgrade it. And for that, we need to be at tier 2. So let's get that in there. We'll save all our food up. That means we can recruit loads more units next turn. And then we'll go for these guys. A little bit keen. I'm going there before we're ready. And they've got wood there. That'll give us a nice bit of production. Foreign emissaries ah, now that's, that's what we're talking about, Arcadians. Non-aggression. And you want some stuff. Yes. Single bar to give me some stone. Early on, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you guys are just demanding bronze. What? That's, that's... That, no, that, that's not how we do. Um, let's uh, let's go into this. How about you give me 100 wood? If you're willing to accept that. Yes. Oh, yeah, you're well, hungry for bronze. 450. No. 431. 32. 33. 34. 35 is... Too much, so it's got to be 434. Now that's a deal I can agree to. Boom. Immobilize against them. Good. Should mention there is region trading in Total War Saga Troy. Uh, you can only do it between uh, regions that have a mutual border. So here uh, with Pylos, we can trade. Uh, if we hit the trade regions button here, we can trade. Uh, Messene that they hold with our settlement that borders it, um, Oitalon. So we could trade those two over, but say we can't trade, you don't get access to all of their regions that to suddenly swap from other, other parts of the map, as it were. Uh, so you can only trade uh, direct mutual border regions. For instance, um, we wouldn't actually get uh, trade regions even showing up as an option between uh, us and the Arcadians because we can't trade away our capital. We can't trade away Sparta. Um, so if you are engaging with factions and you're thinking, hang on, where's trade regions gone? You can only do it when you've got uh, two regions that don't include your capital um, that uh, share a mutual border uh, in this instance here between our two. So yeah, I just wanted to quickly show you guys that. Anyway, right. So Menelaus into the settlement and then let's just yeah smash out some recruitment uh we've got a decent spear line let's get some more axemen three of them in there can't recruit any of the others special units just yet uh, we can do a new raw decree um so i think i'm thinking i'm gonna go for gold just so that we start trickling some gold in per turn because we currently don't have any Any of that. Oh, he's come. He the sailed over to us. May be sought through earthly worship. Brilliant. Construct an altar in honor of one of the. Okie dokie. We will do that here. I think we should go. I mean, you can't go wrong with uh, Daddy Zeus, can you? Uh, what does that give us? Capacity for priestesses. Favor of Zeus. Construction cost for all buildings. That's nice. Again, yeah, all depends on which god you want to put favor towards at any given point but i'm assuming you can build up favor with all of them you just got to balance it carefully but yeah let's go for the zeus and Store it looks ah oh, can i not can I not go around and hit them there Menelaus no Sparta. damn it they're probably gonna land and take it actually i will not give up can i get back probably not i might have lost my settlement <laughs> i've a wrong to right Making landfall. We're back in the settlement. That's fine. There we go. Yeah, let's wait to see what they do. Um, and turn again. So yeah, naval battles are obviously not in the game, but it uses the it uses the Warhammer 2 system of islands, island battles. So everyone peacefully agrees to decamp their ships. Uh, you want military access? 
for some wood. Counter that offer. Go into the single barter. Uh, what have you got that I want? Got a lot of stone. You want 60 wood. How about 53? 52. Ah, they're gonna they're gonna run up there. So they've they've actually gone up here to defend that from Agamemnon, most likely. So it means my army is now free. To go over here and take their settlement. Unless they suddenly come back. Don't think they will, I think they're fairly set on their target. Which is successful, so we've got some wood. You are now ready to recruit an agent. Yes. Such operatives may... And we've leveled up the Zeus cult. Not come back to that for a little bit. So we've now got 100 favor. There is there is decline each turn, but we've now got plus 25% to the melee attack of club units own armies faction-wide. And plus 15% to missile damage javelin units, which isn't that ideal for us. I think actually it is. Uh, is it Hera that gives us? Yeah, missile damage of slingers. So she's probably one we actually want to invest in. Could go for a Hecatomb. Gives us even more favor of Zeus. And that powers up his prayer as well, because it was that each level his prayer gets more effective as well, because it was plus five previously. Um, that'll cost us a fair bit of food, so I'm not going to do that. But let's let's see about getting a, a priestess. Uh, we can't because we need more gold. More gold. So we need to probably trade with someone to get that. But first, let's have another battle. Oh, wow. The city. Though they know and so, yeah, we've got the, the blessing of, of Zeus there. Is massively in our favor, but let's, ha let's have another fight. They deploy and to defend their their settlement. I believe the settlement maps change a little bit as they scale up. Okay, so we've got the. Uh, three-day weather condition wait back in which is nice um let's let's wait and see if we get a different a different type of weather may not do it might be just be time of year nope be able to go so yeah they're going to be defending their settlement the little capture point there oh it's actually a victory point plaza nice but yeah a lot of choke points they can hold here which is pretty cool I'll make uh, a point of trying in my uh, Paris gameplay to do some kind of siege. We can see that going on. If you guys flanking in over here. We'll take a look at some of these new units as well. If you guys over there have spears this section. Support the militia with these guys. Now we've got my slingers. Which, yeah, I'll pop you on skirmish mode. And then Menelaus. We will. So let's have a look at the Clubs. shielded clubmen. Is there any unit that we've got? Big old chunky shields in there. Nice mix as well. Nice horns. One of the things that does make battles look yeah. very nice in Troy is the god ray implementation. It does really help sort of the dynamic lighting. And certainly, especially when like the, you get a map where the sun's rising or something like that. It does look very cool. Right. Let's begin the battle. That's their remaining victory point. So, yeah, we can try and just go in for a cap if we need to. 
Every natural feature may conceal an enemy. Beware of unseen foes. Right. Let's actually split these guys. Send you guys up there. And we're going to absolutely slaughter them. It's just teeny tiny garrison. I was hoping we'd have a big old fight here with that army, but they've obviously got other plans, seeing as we've told Agamemnon to go and attack their other city. So it's actually that's actually worked quite well in our favour. Have our troops advance. Now, performance-wise, I haven't really talked about it, but uh, I'm not allowed to show you guys the graphic settings as far as I'm aware. I did ask the devs, and I, I got a... They'd look into it, but I didn't hear back from them, so... Just to be safe, I'm not showing the, the settings, but I'm playing everything on Ultra, even Shadows, which normally I, I lower to Medium. But this is a... So far, at least on my system, which is a, a, a fairly... OP system to be fair, but compared to what I'm get what I would get in Warhammer 2, I'm getting better FPS. So if you can run I would say tentatively, if you can run Warhammer Your 2 hero is under attack. You can comfortably run You can comfortably run uh Troy. Uh, and you should enjoy better FPS. Yeah, so the collision here, like, they've gone all the way through. Victory is close enough to taste. Because they just kind of just keep on going through units. See what happens here. Because they got a little bit stuck there. Uh, it's a bit messy to see. That's actually held them fairly well. No, you guys definitely flank around this way. have this nice and easy. These guys are loose, so I don't expect them to hold a solid line. They're holding a bit better now, but yeah, those guys running through there. Really have expected that. So we can activate his um, assault and battery ability, but only once. He's running away, isn't he? But only once we've got some rage generator, which he gets through fighting. But seeing as that guy's just running, we're not going to get that. But yeah, the game the game runs really well. Like right now, I mean, what have we got in this battle? Uh, 3,500 units plus uh, and I'm getting just hovering over the map like this I'm getting easily over 100 FPS ultra settings at 1440p okay I have a I have a monstrous PC system but that is a fair bit higher than um, what I would get in Warhammer I'd probably get high 80s in Warhammer Do is we'll leave a spear unit there just to finish the cap. Just got to make them all break. What I would love is a field battle at some point so that we can actually test the collision because so far, actually, what I said earlier doesn't, it's not as big of an issue. But from previous testing, when I had two units clash together, I actually had one where they both basically ran through each other and then had to turn and flank one another because they'd run all the way through and out the other side. I don't think it'll work here just because they're a sort of routing. I mean, here they're just trying to pull through anyway. But there does seem to be this thing where they shunt units in and around them. Like, I don't think they should be able to get through you like that. You probably should be able to hold. I think things, things do need to be a bit tighter. Forward march. Access. 
One but of yeah. your units has no more ammunition. So far from what I played, battles are okay. They just there's nothing really making them stand out as much as I'd have hoped. And there we go, we've got the victory. But that's no surprise considering our forces and the enemies. So battle battles are, are, are lackluster. They're like they, they seemingly <laughs> they haven't had the um, collision issue that I was talking about. So they they work, they function. But while I feel the campaign map certainly has new features and, and builds upon previous Total War features and mechanics. Uh, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, loot and occupy. We get a whole range of resources, which is nice. Provincial instability and conquest penalty. That's fine, though. Yeah, I feel good. battles haven't evolved much with this one, which is a bit of a shame because I feel like there's a, a lot they could be, be doing. Yes, we can do a commandment, which... Yeah. Your heroic deeds have earned oh, here we the go. blessings of Ares. Yeah, we've gained an upgrade. Through you. Silence. Empires are given form by the houses and temples their rule. I kind of feel like you're a bit late telling me all this about repairing stuff. I've been doing it for many turns now. We've got the province. So we've got uh, a trade tithe plus 5% to all resources in this province. We've got established by network. We've got organized games. We've got warrior camps. And we've got Palace Administration. I'm going to go for that one for construction cost reduction. Uh, we've already... Sparta's already got a, uh, a military building, so we don't need that one there. Uh, Etis, we... Yeah, should repair your, your boats there. Uh, I won't do too much more building because it's going to take a turn for that to kick in. In fact, actually... Yeah, no, we'll wait, we'll wait a whole turn on that. We will recruit some more units before we push on. Um, let's see if we can get some other to arms units that look pretty cool. Uh, we could go for these guys, shielded spearmen. Or oh, renowned slingers. I feel like we've got enough. The bowmen would be pretty cool, but we've got enough missile troops right now. Uh, I feel like another shielded clubman would be good. That's that club militia, isn't it? Let's throw you guys in. We'll have 18 in two turns. And then you'll save everything else. Although we can get... We can get a, a priestess... We need more gold and we do need a bit more food. Um, so we'll probably need to do some trades for that. But we'll just blast sure through another turn or two. Oh, hello, Achilles. What do you want? You want a single barter of my wood and my stone. Um, I'm going to counter off you. How much food? Oh, look at Achilles storing all that food. I think we can... Uh, actually, yeah, why, do I, why am I asking for wood? What I want is food. Europe. That's why. I need to click on that all the way down. There we go. Oh, yeah. He's going to give me loads of food. Yes. Give me all that food. Give me all your food, Achilles. Oh, that's too much, apparently. That's a bridge too far in between. Okay. So, what about we go for a nice 25? Yes. Perfect. For that stone, uh, it was just for the stone, wasn't it? Oh, actually, yeah, we've, we've kicked off the wood he wanted. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, that'll do That'll do swimmingly, Achilles. Yes. I... Thank you. So, yeah, they've taken out them there. So, if their army was still alive, they're probably attritioning now. Agamemnon beginning his sort of unification... Of Greece. Conquering those that will not bend the knee and support him. Talking now avoids suffering later. Right. You Ajax. Um you want a lot of stuff. How how's your food looking? Yeah, you've got a lot of food. Actually, you've got some gold, and I need some gold. That's what I need. I need gold for my priestess. So I will give you all that you've asked for if you give me... Ooh, you're going to give me a lot of gold. I'm going to give you all your gold nearly. Yes, we'll do all that. Done deal. Not a problem. Thank you. So yeah, definitely... If you don't have the resources on a set turn and you really want to... 
you want to get something done that turn or like i would say don't be afraid to there, there's the see the, the burning map effect that is really cool the edges of the map burn and you get the the ashes as it were the sparks that's super cool a lot of time for that Raw Commandment. Noise. Do, 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 do. So we got more food from that. We've got plenty now. Be performed in times of crisis to seek the assistance of a favoured god. This sacrificial ritual can bring great benefits. I kind of feel like you shouldn't be telling me this on turn 13. I think maybe a bit earlier would have been <laughs> a bit more useful. But there's, there's, I might well be staggered because there is quite a lot to get your head around. Uh, and obviously we've we've ignored some of this stuff where really if we wanted to maximize our our gameplay we should be probably doing this every single turn or every time every turn that we've got food available which we've got quite a lot right now if we do immortal glory we actually get a mythic unit available in the special recruitment pool uh that might well be bugged though there was a caveat on this build that menelaus's uh mythic or special recruitment pool doesn't necessarily appear but that's a, a issue with just this build it should be fixed very soon or i think it's already fixed actually on the dev build just not on the one that the content creator's got um but let's let's give that a go actually but first let's get that priestess uh what do we want to go follower of apollo oh so these each give us yeah favor of all the gods um let's it's either basically it's poseidon athena or apollo that we've got so let's take a look at those apollo will give us recruitment rank of priestesses um, so actually, if we if we quickly did a Hecatomb to him, we could get that that bonus recruitment level for them right now, which would be quite good. Um, Athena does plus forty percent morale to spear units own armies faction wide, and fatigue in battle for units when defending. Um, Poseidon, yeah, let's do Apollo Hecatomb. There we go. So we've now got his. There we go now got his uh cult favor there so if we go back to priestess get rank three now we'll go for one for apollo and we've recruited an agent an agent has enrolled in your service put them to good use either at home or abroad and their unique skills may resolve problems that cannot be dealt with by resources or effort okay so you have a lot of uh, things you can do. So actions, you can do sacrificial offering, own army, soothsayer, ritual of exaltation, ritual of ruination, reduces morale, operation of dread, reduces the morale, prophecy of doom, prevents the character from moving on the next turn. That's quite useful. Uh, reveal transgression after unlocking the skill preacher of honesty. Yeah, there's so much we barely touched everything we'll try and go through i'll try and make that a bit more of a focus of my paris gameplay going through agents we've just not going through everything else not had time um that is yeah go through that one then we've got different upgrade choices here 10 plus 10 to the amount of gold received on the next turn successful action against a foreign uh, army that's pretty cool i like that so we haven't even so we actually yeah as long as we're at the level we don't need to have done the ones before it they're just at each rank so you don't have to go through previous ones as sort of prerequisites which is pretty cool and i think we'll do one more turn and that is unfortunately where i'm gonna have to end things for today so i know we haven't made like massive progress but i'm, I'm hoping that you guys appreciate kind of the the split focus between a bit of gameplay um probably for the second half of the video and the first half focused on covering and going through and you know looking through in detail some of the various features that are available in Total War Saga Troy. If you do want more of a Perhaps it is pure focus. Oh, and we're getting attacked by these guys. That's fun. Prepare for battle. Yeah, call them all. You're gonna die. So yeah, things for for Menelaus right now, if we were to continue this, we'd get very spicy. But yeah. If you want to see more more focused gameplay, then do feel free to check out my Paris gameplay. That is going to be out on the 24th. I hope you've enjoyed this one again. Big thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access. Uh, until the next one, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take part on the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet and Overclockers UK. Till the next one, ciao for now.